and two has become three because we have been joined by an extremely popular individual, the former Watford Nottingham Forest and West Brom Sporting Director Luke Dowling is with us. We're talking about some of the activities off the field as well as on it. These days, sporting directors, technical directors, their appointments can be crucially important to any which club. And of course... Dara knows many of the names that Luke is sharing with us at this moment. And one of those names, Luke, is Dan Ashworth to Manchester United. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Dan Ashworth and Peterborough. Mm. And not many people will know the connection there, right? No, we create talent everywhere. He came through some of our uh, youth academy ranks as well. Okay. So, you know, all I'm saying to you is, is you know, top man now in football, yep. look where he's risen to. Yep. Not that he's done us any great favours at Newcastle, I'm really joking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there he is. Like that. Yep. Looks like getting out of Newcastle sometime soon because you have to think so Jim Ratcliffe is going to get his man. Yep. No matter the time it will take. Ashworth, his qualities, Luke, what are they? I think people, when he, when he officially joins United, whenever that may be, I think from a supporter supporters point of view they'll just look at signings because that's what supporters do they just think sport and technical director they just look at players and rightly so but what Dan will do Dan will, will go in and he'll look at everything he'll look at you know the recruitment the real structure the recruitment he'll look at the medical side he'll look at the injury record this season he'll look how to improve that the travel how they travel what what can they improve so Dan will go in yes I'm sure um, first and foremost it will be players and how can they improve on the pitch but he will go in, look at every department. Methodically. Yeah, how we can do it. In the academy, he'll play a massive part in that. I think England now are really seeing the benefits of Dan Ashworth with mm -hmm. the FA, with the tournaments that we won under 2017s, the players yeah. coming through. That's what Dan put in place many years ago. If he'd have stayed at Newcastle, um, he'd, I'm sure he'd have done that. They were in the process now of starting to be a little bit more aggressive on their academy recruitment, yeah. Newcastle. His reputation so, second. Yeah, so Dan will go in. He's got a lovely way about him. He'll go in. Yes, recruitment's a massive, massive thing at any football club. But behind that, which, some, which supporters don't see, which then goes and supports the results... Um, he'll, I'm sure he'll go through all that and uh, make it better. But sure. might it be applied? I know it's easy with the benefit of hindsight. Might he not have applied more due diligence when it came to the signing of Sandra Tonali? Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting one because how I don't, I don't believe any betting company will will be able to give away information of who their clients are and what they do or what they don't do. They do That's plenty of that. Tipping off the authorities does betting companies. Yeah. How do you think people find out? No, but they tip off the authority to <laughs> yeah. say, look, he's up to the, no good. Yeah. But what I mean is... Only when they you know, lose. West Brom ring up <laughs> and say, we're looking to sign Ivan Tony. Does, mm. You know, has he got an account with you? They're not going to... They probably can't say yes, for example. <laughs> but, you know, the Tenardi one's but even in more... In the interest of Newcastle, it would have been good to have known clearly about what is going on in Milan. Yeah, but am I right in thinking though that his the betting he had in Milan was with um, wasn't with a, a run of the mill betting company? It was with um, associated with the mafia. Um, That's what I, I, I'm, I'm led to believe. So, Jim, Jim had no uh, more. He's obsessed know, so with the I, whole game. You know, thing. I don't know. <laughs> I, it, see, it's so easy for you know people say do your background checks. Yes, you know which all clubs do. But I just find that really but, really but, difficult. But how do you, how do you find You're not out? The FBI. What does that include, though, Luke? I mean. Obviously, the, the, they're going to ask the agent some yeah. some very searching questions yeah. of a player. When you're going to part company with the the amount of money that you can't yeah. ask the agent, Jim. But you're do, going to ask. Do you <laughs> ask seriously, penetrative questions of an agent or of a player? If you ask the agent questions, you're going to get told what you want to hear. Yeah, they're lying. You know, you. so it's it's down to you as a club to go beyond the agent. Um, because an agent, like a, like any person in an interview, that person's going to agree and say what you want to hear. So when you're asking the agent, he's going to say no. He's good. He's a good boy. He's in bed by nine every night. He loves his wife, his children, etc., <laughs> etc. Et we know that's not the reality with most people. So it's for you to look yeah. at those checks. It's also for you to have relationships with other clubs where they've been. So I, I, say, I, I'll give you an example. We were looking to sign a player in in Jan, and we'd done the the rounds ringing. Yeah. We rang, forget the agent, the player. Yeah. They're going to tell you, you know, yeah. whatever right, you want to right, hear. Right. So we rang basically current teammates, yeah, whatever yeah. else. Yeah. And it was, you know, 90% of the comments were good guy, blah, 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 blah. A few mm. of them were a bit, you know, a bit tardy. Mm. You know, okay, he's 22, tardy. We can get that out of yeah. him. So on the day of transfer deadline, they were ready to pull the trigger, do deals, da 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 da. Then it was just by chance. And this is, this is something from now on I'm going to learn from. Our physio was having a chat with the opposing physio of the club we were buying from to get all the medical records in, in time for the medical. Yeah. And it was the physio at the other club who turned around and said, you be signing that player. Complete wrong. And our physio went, what? 
You should never hear. <laughs> Worst character. Blah, 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 blah. We pulled out a deal. Mm. So sometimes you can even go as far but there's, as... But you know, there's, yeah. there's a difference, and that's and that's where you get your best information, Jimmy. Yep. Speaking to a coach, an ex-teammate, to of how they've been. Right. Because, it, but the, do you know the best person that will give you an opinion on a player? Go and speak to a kit man that's managing. 100%. Because if you don't treat the kit man with respect... Yep, they'll tell the truth. They'll tell the truth. But you, I don't think Newcastle spoke to the kit man at Milan. <laughs> no, but I, you know, listen, he might I be his bookmaker. More but, than um, more no, but in terms of how that player is generally yeah. around the place, the kit man will have a great time because, you know, they're with them 24 hours yeah, a day. Yeah, and yeah exactly. absolutely. And, but, you know, you, yeah. you also will get... Um, Pereira, the board I mentioned previously, mm -hmm. he was at Sporting Lisbon, he was a Sporting Lisbon player, loaned out in Germany. Yeah. And, you, you know, he come to us and we got told this and he can be a little bit stroppy, a little bit moody. He's a sulker. Blah, a blah, sulker. Blah, 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 and blah. listen, as long as the manager, you think the that manager can control me. that, no problem. Yeah. If they're on time, they train hard and they have a little sulk now and again, you can manage that. And, you know, the first three, four months you're thinking, I don't know where this is coming from. Then we start to see it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But as long as it's manageable and they're respectful yeah. of the staff, respectful of their teammates, they're on time. The human yeah. beings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but it, going back to it, Jim, I just think it's so difficult to actually yeah. get into that I, detail. I, I wouldn't hold anyone responsible at Newcastle higher level no. for not finding out about someone's addiction no. or all the things that went with it. Yeah, yeah. And as for the FA potentially... Um, giving him a longer ban yeah that's mad because he's already got a year ban which should have got coincided Come with inside, it. do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean so, yeah. and he fessed up to the yeah. FL I'll yeah. put you in the spot Luke Dan Ashworth going into United Richard Hughes going into Liverpool which is a better deal I think Dan's reputation um, tells you that Man United have got a better person that's my opinion um, I think with what he's done um, with the FA as I mentioned before you know what he had a, the impact he had at Brighton and I think what he would have built at Newcastle longer term so I would sit here now and say that I think you know we look back in five years time um, I think Man United would have had the better deal with Dan Ashworth that's not to say that Richard Hughes is not capable of course he is He's, I like you know, Richard so, you know some of their yeah. recruitment some of their recruitment at Bournemouth has been you know brilliant you know the Nathan Ackies of this world you know Solanke's etc they've signed some great players um, sure. and I think it will really help Richard going mm. in there with his relationship and how um Previous relationship with Michael Edwards, so that would really help. I think that would help Richard settle in. There's yeah. less pressure on Richard as well with Liverpool because Liverpool's recruitment isn't scattergun like, say, no, Man United, no. 70 million last yeah. minute, 90 yeah. million yeah. from Anthony right. last yeah. minute. Right. The pressure on these next three, four windows at United, Ashworth and his guys, whoever the technical directors yeah. are going to be under so much pressure to get it right yeah. because it's been so wrong. Do you but know the best thing, Dara, that uh, Richard Hughes has got that Dan Ashworth hasn't? Yeah. When Richard Hughes, the day Richard Hughes walks into Liverpool, he's got Barry Hunter yeah. and Dave Fellows Phenomenal. in there that are exceptional at their job. Yeah. Who do what? Who, um, like scouting, head of recruitment, recruit, head of recruitment and chief scout, they yeah. are the phenomenal. pair of them. And that phenomenal, mm. absolutely phenomenal. And that's what Richard yeah. Hughes has got that Dan Ashworth hasn't. But Dan will create that. People, Dan, people Dan, you Dan don't hear of, by the way, Jim. into a proper structure. Yeah, unbelievable. Unsung heroes. Unbelievable. You don't hear of people like this. Yeah, I know. So. So. I, so. I used to laugh to myself when you, you know, when Brendan Rodgers became Liverpool manager and they'd say, we've got a transfer committee. Yeah. And people say, what's a transfer committee? <laughs> Everyone has a transfer committee. So if, you know, if it's if I'm at work in a Peterborough and it's me, Darren, a manager talking about a player, yeah. is that classed as a committee? That, well, you know, it's, I'll, I'll give yeah, you an example yeah. tomorrow. It's, tomorrow I've got a recruitment meeting. Yeah. And there's two things in that meeting. There's plan A and plan B. Plan A is playing for the champ. Plan B is planning for League One again. Yep. And I have my manager, Barry. I've got Liz, head of football operations and that. I've got my two coaches, all right? And I've got my under-21s manager. Yep. And I've got the analyst for the manager. And I've got my gem scout. And we're all in a room tomorrow for yep. about 10 hours. Yeah. Arguing backwards and forwards. Yep. Players up here. Yeah. Yeah. Players up, yeah. Absolutely. Who's yeah. staying? Who's going? Who's yeah. selling for big bucks? Sure. And we'll come out of yeah. that with an idea for both plans yeah. by the end of yeah. it. Look, you'd be nothing short of magnificent. I want to ask you where you think you, you'll end up next. Having said that, having worked at Watford with the Pozo, Sheffield Wednesday with Chan Siri and Maranakis at Forest, your therapist does not earn <laughs> way what he should do. Uh, Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.